Jesus said they'll know that we're Christians by our love for one another. You're listening to the LifeSpring Family Audio Bible, coming to you from Riverside, California, and podcasting since 2004. I'm your OG Godcaster, Steve Webb. This is the daily podcast where we'll read the entire Bible in a year. I'm happy to see you today. This is History Tuesday, and we'll read Joshua 11 through 15. And after the reading, I've got some comments for you. I'm calling today's episode, When God Says Go. But before we read, let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless the reading of these chapters in Joshua today. Make it real to us and help us to understand what you want to teach us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready? Let's begin. Joshua chapter 11 King Jabin of Hazor heard about Joshua's victories, so he sent messages to many nearby kings and asked them to join him in fighting Israel. He sent these messages to King Jobab of Madon, the kings of Shimron and Akshaph, the kings in the northern hill country and in the Jordan River Valley south of Lake Galilee, and the kings in the foothills and in Naphath Dor to the west. He sent messages to the Canaanite kings in the east and the west, to the Amorite, Hittite, Perizzite, and Jebusite kings in the hill country, and to the Hivite kings in the region of Mizpah near the foot of Mount Hermon. The kings and their armies went to Miram Pond, where they set up camp and got ready to fight Israel. It seemed as though there were more soldiers and horses and chariots than there are grains of sand on the beach. The Lord told Joshua, Don't let them frighten you. I'll help you defeat them, and by this time tomorrow they will be dead. When you attack, the first thing you have to do is to cripple their horses. Then, after the battle is over, burn their chariots. Joshua and his army made a surprise attack against the enemy camp at Miram Pond and crippled the enemy's horses. Joshua followed the Lord's instructions, and the Lord helped Israel defeat the enemy. The Israelite army even chased soldiers as far as Mizrafoth Maim to the northwest, the city of Sidon to the north, and Mizpah Valley to the northeast. None of the enemy soldiers escaped alive. The Israelites came back after the battle and burned the enemy's chariots. Up to this time, the king of Hazor had controlled the kingdoms that had joined together to attack Israel. So Joshua led his army back and captured Hazor. They killed its king and everyone else, and then they set the town on fire. Joshua captured all the towns where the enemy kings had ruled. These towns were built on small hills, and Joshua did not set fire to any of these towns except Hazor. The Israelites kept the animals and everything of value from these towns, but they killed everyone who lived in them, including their kings. That's what the Lord had told his servant Moses to do, that's what Moses had told Joshua to do, and that's exactly what Joshua did. Joshua and his army took control of the northern and southern hill country, the foothills to the west, the southern desert, the whole region of Goshen, and the Jordan River Valley. They took control of the land from Mount Halak, near the country of Edom in the south, to Baal Gad in Lebanon Valley at the foot of Mount Hermon in the north. Joshua and his army were at war with the kings in this region for a long time but finally they captured and put to death the last king. The Lord had told Moses that he wanted the towns in this region destroyed and their people killed without mercy. That's why the Lord made the people in the towns stubborn and determined to fight Israel. The only town that signed a peace treaty with Israel was the Hivite town of Gibeon. The Israelite army captured the rest of the towns in battle. During this same time, Joshua and his army killed the Anakim from the northern and southern hill country. They also destroyed the towns where the Anakim had lived, including Hebron, Deber, and Anab. There were not any Anakim left in the regions where the Israelites lived, although there were still some in Gaza, Gath, and Ashdod. That's how Joshua captured the land, just as the Lord had commanded Moses, and Joshua divided it up among the tribes. Finally, there was peace in the land. Joshua chapter 12 now these are the kings of the land whom the Israelites defeated and drove from their land on the east side of the Jordan, from the Arnon Valley to Mount Hermon, including all the eastern Arabah. King Sihon of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon and ruled from Aror on the edge of the Arnon Valley, including the city in the middle of the valley and half of Gilead, all the way to the Jabbok Valley, bordering Ammonite territory. 
His kingdom included the eastern Araba from the Sea of Kinnereth to the Sea of the Araba, or the Salt Sea, including the route to Beth Jeshimoth and the area southward below the slopes of Pisgah. The territory of King Og of Bashan, one of the few remaining Rephaites, who lived in Asheroth and Edrei and ruled over Mount Hermon, Salica, all of Bashan to the border of the Geshurites and Maacathites, and half of Gilead as far as the border of King Sihon of Heshbon. Moses the Lord's servant and the Israelites defeated them, and Moses the Lord's servant assigned their land to Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. These are the kings of the land whom Joshua and the Israelites defeated on the west side of the Jordan, from Baal Gad in the Lebanon Valley to Mount Halak on up to Seir. Joshua assigned this territory to the Israelite tribes, including the hill country, the lowlands, the Araba, the slopes, the wilderness, and the Negev, the land of the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. The king of Jericho, 1. The king of Ai, located near Bethel, 1. The king of Jerusalem, 1. The king of Hebron, 1. The king of Jarmuth, 1. The king of Lachish, 1. The king of Eglon, 1. The king of Gezer, 1. The king of Deber, 1. The king of Geder, 1. The king of Hormah, 1. The king of Arad, 1. The king of Libna, 1. The king of Adullam, 1. The king of Makeda, 1. The king of Bethel, 1. The king of Tapua, 1. The king of Hefer, 1. The king of Aphek, 1. The king of Lasharon, 1. The king of Madon, 1. The king of Hazor, 1. The king of Shimron Miron, 1. The king of Akshaph, 1. The king of Taanach, 1. The king of Megiddo, 1. The king of Kedesh, 1. The king of Jokneam near Carmel, 1. The king of Dor near Naphath Dor, 1. The king of Goyim near Gilgal, 1. The king of Tirzah, 1. A total of 31 kings. Joshua chapter 13 When Joshua was very old, the Lord told him, you are very old, and a great deal of land remains to be conquered. This is the land that remains, all the territory of the Philistines and all the Geshurites, from the Shihor River east of Egypt northward to the territory of Ekron. It is regarded as Canaanite territory, including the area belonging to the five Philistine lords who ruled in Gaza, Ashdod, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron, as well as Avite land to the south, all the Canaanite territory from Era in the region of Sidon to Aphek, as far as Amorite territory, the territory of Biblis and all Lebanon to the east, from Baal Gad below Mount Hermon to Lebo Hamath. I will drive out before the Israelites all who live in the hill country from Lebanon to Mizrafoth Mayim, all the Sidonians. You be sure to parcel it out to Israel as I instructed you. Now divide up this land among the nine tribes and the half tribe of Manasseh. The other half of Manasseh, Reuben and Gad, received their allotted tribal lands beyond the Jordan, just as Moses, the Lord's servant, had assigned them. Their territory started from Aroer, on the edge of the Arnon Valley, included the city in the middle of the valley, the whole plain of Medeba, as far as Dibon, and all the cities of King Sihon of the Amorites, who ruled in Heshbon, and ended at the Ammonite border. Their territory also included Gilead, Geshurite and Maacathite territory, all Mount Hermon, and all Bashan to Salica, the whole kingdom of Og in Bashan, who ruled in Ashtaroth and Edrei. He was one of the few remaining Rephaites. Moses defeated them and took their lands, but the Israelites did not conquer the Geshurites and Maacathites. Geshur and Maacah live among Israel to this very day. However, Moses did not assign land as an inheritance to the Levites. Their inheritance is the sacrificial offerings made to the Lord God of Israel as he instructed them. Moses assigned land to the tribe of Reuben by its clans. Their territory started at Aroer, on the edge of the Arnon Valley, and included the city in the middle of the valley, the whole plain of Medaba, Heshbon, and all its surrounding cities on the plain, including Dibon, Bamoth Baal, Beth Baal Meon, Jahaz, Kittimoth, Mephaath, Kiriathaim, Sibma, Zereth Shehar on the hill in the valley, 
Beth Piar, the slopes of Pisgah, and Beth Jeshemoth. It accompanied all the cities of the plain and the whole realm of King Sihon of the Amorites who ruled in Heshbon. Moses defeated him and the Midianite leaders, Evi, Rechem, Zer, Hur, and Reba. They were subjects of Sihon and lived in his territory. The Israelites killed Balaam, son of Beor, the omen reader, along with the others. The border of the tribe of Reuben was the Jordan. The land allotted to the tribe of Reuben by its clans included these cities and their towns. Moses assigned land to the tribe of Gad by its clans. Their territory included Jazer, all the lands of Gilead, and half of the Ammonite territory as far as Aroer near Rabbah. Their territory ran from Heshbon to Ramath Mizpah in Betanim, and from Maenaim to the territory of Deber. It included the valley of Beth Haram, Beth Nimrah, Succoth, and Zaphon, and the rest of the realm of King Sihon of Heshbon, the area east of the Jordan to the end of the Sea of Kenareth. The land allotted to the tribe of Gad by its clans included these cities and their towns. Moses assigned land to the half tribe of Manasseh by its clans. Their territory started at Maenaim and encompassed all Bashan, the whole realm of King Og of Bashan, including all sixty cities in Havoth Jair in Bashan. Half of Gilead, Ashtaroth, and Edrei, cities in the kingdom of Og in Bashan, were assigned to the descendants of Maker, son of Manasseh, to half the descendants of Maker by their clans. These are the land assignments made by Moses on the plains of Moab east of the Jordan River opposite Jericho. However, Moses did not assign land as an inheritance to the Levites. Their inheritance is the Lord God of Israel, as he instructed them. Joshua chapter 14 the following is a record of the territory assigned to the Israelites in the land of Canaan by Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the Israelite tribal leaders. The land assignments to the nine and a half tribes were made by drawing lots, as the Lord had instructed Moses. Now Moses had assigned land to the two and a half tribes east of the Jordan, but he assigned no land to the Levites. The descendants of Joseph were considered as two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. The Levites were allotted no territory, though they were assigned cities in which to live, along with the grazing areas for their cattle and possessions. The Israelites followed the Lord's instructions to Moses and divided up the land. The men of Judah approached Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite said to him, You know what the Lord said about you and me to Moses, the man of God, at Kadesh Barnea. I was forty years old when Moses, the Lord's servant, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy on the land, and I brought back to him an honest report. My countrymen who accompanied me frightened the people, but I remained loyal to the Lord my God. That day Moses made his solemn promise, Surely the land on which you walked will belong to you and your descendants permanently, for you remained loyal to the Lord your God. So now, look, the Lord has preserved my life, just as he promised, these past forty-five years since the Lord spoke these words to Moses, during which Israel traveled through the wilderness. Now look, I am today eighty-five years old. Today I am still as strong as when Moses sent me out. I can fight and go about my daily activities with the same energy I had then. Now assign me this hill country which the Lord promised me at that time. No doubt you heard at that time that the Anakites live there in large fortified cities. But assuming the Lord is with me, I will conquer them as the Lord promised. Joshua asked God to empower Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and assigned him Hebron. So Hebron remains the assigned land of Caleb, son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite, to this very day, because he remained loyal to the Lord God of Israel. Hebron used to be called Kiriath Arba. Arba was the famous Anakite. Then the land was free of war. Joshua chapter 15 The land allotted to the tribe of Judah by its clans reached to the border of Edom, to the wilderness of Zin in the Negev far to the south. Their southern border started at the southern tip of the Salt Sea, extended south of the Scorpion Ascent, crossed to Zin, went up from the south to Kadesh Barnea, crossed to Hezron, went up to Adar, and turned toward Karka. It then crossed to Asman, extended to the stream of Egypt, and ended at the sea. This was their southern border. The eastern border was the Salt Sea to the mouth of the Jordan River. The northern border started north of the Salt Sea at the mouth of the Jordan, 
went up to Beth Hogla, crossed north of Beth Araba, and went up to the stone of Bohan, son of Reuben. It then went up to Deber from the valley of Achor, turning northward to Gilgal, which is opposite the pass of Adummim, south of the valley, crossed to the waters of En Shemesh, and extended to En Rogel. It then went up to the valley of Ben Hinnom to the slope of the Jebusites on the south, that is, Jerusalem, going up to the top of the hill opposite the valley of Ben Hinnom to the west, which is at the end of the valley of the Rephaites to the north. It then went from the top of the hill to the spring of the waters of Nephtoah, extended to the cities of Mount Ephron, and went up to Baala, that is, Kiriath Jearim. It then turned from Baala westward to Mount Seir, crossed to the slope of Mount Jearim on the north, that is, Kesselon, descended to Beth Shemesh, and crossed to Timnah. It then extended to the slope of Ekron to the north, and went toward Shikaron, crossed to Mount Baala, extended to Jabneel, and ended at the sea. The western border was the Mediterranean Sea. These were the borders of the tribe of Judah and its clans. Caleb son of Jephunneh was assigned Kiriath Arba, that is, Hebron, within the tribe of Judah, according to the Lord's instructions to Joshua. Arba was the father of Anak. Caleb drove out from there three Anakites, Shishai, Ahiman, and Talmai, descendants of Anak. From there he attacked the people of Deber. Deber used to be called kiriath Sefer. Caleb said, To the man who attacks and captures kiriath Sefer, I will give my daughter Aksa as a wife. When Othniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's brother, captured it, Caleb gave Aksa his daughter to him as a wife. One time Aksa came and charmed her father so that she could ask him for some land. When she got down from her donkey, Caleb said to her, What would you like? She answered, Please give me a special present. Since you have given me land in the Negev, now give me springs of water. So he gave her both upper and lower springs. This is the land assigned to the tribe of Judah by its clans. These cities were located at the southern extremity of Judah's tribal land near the border of Edom. Kabziel, Eder, Jager, Kina, Demona, Adida, Kedesh, Hazor, Ithnan, Ziph, Telem, Bealoth, Hazor Hadada, Kiriath Hezron, that is Hazor, Amam, Shema, Molada, Hazor Gada, Heshbon, Beth Pilet, Hazor Shul, Beersheba, Biziothiah, Baala, Ayim, Ezim, El Tolad, Kiesel, Horma, Ziklag, Madmana, Sansana, Labaoth, Shilhim, Ain, and Rimon, a total of twenty-nine cities and their towns. These cities were in the lowlands. Eshtael, Zora, Ashna, Zenoa, and Ganim, Tapua, Enim, Jarmuth, Adullam, Soko, Azika, Shearaim, Adathaim, and Gadira, or Gadira Theim, a total of fourteen cities and their towns. Zenon, Hadasha, Migdalgad, Dilian, Mizpah, Jogthiel, Lakish, Boskath, Eglon, Cabin, Lamas, Kitlish, Gadiroth, Beth Dagon, Naama, and Makeda, a total of sixteen cities and their towns. Libna, Ether, Ashan, Ifta, Ashna, Nizib, Kiila, Akzib, and Marisha, a total of nine cities and their towns. Ekron and its surrounding towns and settlements. From Ekron westward, all those in the vicinity of Ashdod and their towns. Ashdod with its surrounding towns and settlements, and Gaza with its surrounding towns and settlements, as far as the stream of Egypt and the border at the Mediterranean Sea. These cities were in the hill country. Shamer, Jadar, Soko, Dana, Kiriath Sana, that is, Deber, Anab, Eshtemo, Anim, Goshen, Holon, and Gilo, a total of eleven cities and their towns. Arab, Duma, Eshan, Janim, Beth Tapua, Afika, Humta, Kiriath Arba, that is, Hebron, and Zior, a total of nine cities and their towns. Maon, Carmel, Ziph, Jada, Jezreel, Joktium, Zenoa, Cain, Gibeah, and Timnah, 
a total of ten cities in their towns. Halhol, Beth Zur, Gidor, Meirath, Beth Anoth, and Eltikon, a total of six cities in their towns. Kiriath Baal, that is, Kiriath Jearim, and Rabbah, a total of two cities in their towns. These cities were in the desert Beth Arabah, Midin, Sekeka, Nibshan, the city of Salt, and in Gedi, a total of six cities in their towns. The men of Judah were unable to conquer the Jebusites living in Jerusalem. The Jebusites live with the people of Judah in Jerusalem to this very day. Well, today I've got some comments on Joshua 11. There are three things, actually, I want to look at for just a moment. Number one, we see in the first few verses that Israel's enemies banded together to defeat them. It didn't matter what their differences were. They just knew that Israel had defeated every enemy they had faced. So if they were to have any chance at all, they knew they had to fight Israel together. Well, guess what? We as Christians could learn from that. We have a common enemy as well. That enemy, of course, is the enemy of man's soul, Satan. And just as Israel had no prayer of defeating their enemies in the promised land without the help of God, we have no hope of defeating Satan in our own lives without the help of that same God. Yes, it's true, Christ has already defeated Satan, but we battle him every day in our lives, don't we? Well, we need God's help. And also, the world today is in turmoil on a hundred different fronts, but you can be sure that that same enemy, that is our enemy, is behind all the troubles in the world. It's the father of lies, Satan. He delights when man is fearful, combative, hateful, and without hope. But it's our job to tell mankind of the good news of Jesus Christ. And we have a better chance of success if we forget about the things that cause division amongst us and focus on what we have in common. Jesus the Messiah. But if we're divided, our message is diluted. The world is less inclined to believe us if we can't get along with one another. Jesus said they'll know that we're Christians by our love for one another. Believers need to focus on the one who died for us, not on our petty differences, whether they be political or anything else. And then number two, Notice that God did not fight these battles for Joshua miraculously like he did in the beginning. He has demonstrated already to Joshua that he is with him, and he assures Joshua that Joshua will have the victory. But God gives Joshua the battle plan and then leaves Joshua to execute that plan. Family, as we mature in our spiritual life, he expects more of us, as he expected more of Joshua. He expects us to fight our own battles. How many times have I heard someone say, if God would only just take that temptation away because I just can't handle it on my own? That's hogwash. He's given you what you need, the Holy Spirit, to guide you. But you need to follow the Spirit's leading. You just need to say no to temptation. 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. God didn't fight all of Joshua's battles, and he's not going to fight all of your battles either. He's given you the tools you need, and he expects you to use them. And number three, near the end of the chapter, when Joshua and Israel have nearly completed the task of taking the land promised to their fathers by God, we're told that Joshua and his army killed the Anakim from the northern and southern hill country. So who were the Anakim? When Moses was still alive, just as he brought the people to the threshold of the promised land, he sent 12 men in to scout out the country. And when they came back, most of the scouts correctly said that it was a land flowing with milk and honey. But they also reported that the people who lived there were strong, and their cities were large and walled. And they said, we even saw the three Anakim clans. In fact, we saw the Nephilim, who are the ancestors of the Anakim. They were so big that we felt as small as grasshoppers. And so what happened was, the people of Israel became fearful. They forgot about all the miracles God had done for them to bring them out of Pharaoh's Egypt, how he gave them water out of a rock, how he fed them manna from heaven. They said, we wish we had died in Egypt or somewhere out here in the desert. 
Is the Lord leading us into Canaan just to have us killed and our women and children captured? We'd be better off in Egypt. Well, God became very angry at them and ultimately said, in essence, fine, they want to die in the desert, in the desert they shall die. Not one of this generation will set foot in the promised land. Beloved, it was their lack of faith that caused them to wander in the desert for 40 years. Now, let me back up just a bit. There were two that brought this report back that said, no, God said we can do it, we can do it. One of them was Joshua, the one for whom this book is named. The other one was Canaan. We'll learn more about them later. So, back to our story. Now, of course, God was able to defeat Israel's enemies when they first arrived at the threshold of the Promised Land. But their lack of faith stood in the way, and an entire generation missed out on seeing God's promise fulfilled. There are times that God leads us to a situation that looks impossible. But if He calls us to move ahead, He will be with us to accomplish the task. Blessings will always follow. Well, you've heard a few of my thoughts. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Call the LifeSpring Family Hotline at 951-732-8511. And if you're outside the U.S., put a plus one at the beginning of that number. You can also comment on the show notes page for this episode at LifespringMedia.com slash S13E017 or go to comment.lifespringmedia.com. And you can always email me at steve at lifespringmedia.com. Speaking of comments, I got a comment this morning from Brother Paul of Seattle. He wrote, Hi, Steve. This year as I'm listening to you read through the Bible, I've decided to follow along by reading myself. Since I'm doing this, I noticed a note I wrote in my Bible app from 2015 on Genesis 8:11, asking, how could there be an olive leaf if everything was covered in water for a long time? I did a bit of Googling around and came across this site, among others, and it's uh, neverthirsty.org, and it's a long link. I won't read the whole link to you, but it, um, Paul says, it seems like the answers range from, in no particular order here, number one, God is God and can make anything happen. Paul says, the Christian catch-all, as I'm not going to call it. (laughs) Number two, olive tree leaves can actually last underwater. And number three, as the waters receded, there was actually enough time for the plants to start growing again before the dove was sent out, and the ground was probably a lot more fertile than it is today. Paul says, this one makes a lot of sense to me. Anyway, just curious as to what your thoughts are on the matter. Well, on this one, Paul, I have to agree with number three that uh, you said makes a lot of sense to you. Yes, they were on the ark for a very long time, and I think it's reasonable to think that there may have been an olive branch that had sprouted that the dove brought back. It is true that God is God, and he can make anything happen. He can do anything, of course. And whether olive tree leaves can actually last underwater, I don't know if that's true or not. But to me, the reasonable one is that they were on the ark for a very long time. Well, Brother Paul, thanks for sending in that comment. Tomorrow is Psalms Wednesday. We'll read chapters 6 through 8. And remember that Wednesday is one of the days we share prayer requests and praises. Don't be shy. We are called to pray for one another. James 5.16 says, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. And we have a promise about the results of prayer. Philippians 5, 6, and 7 says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So, beloved, let's pray for one another. Call the LifeSpring Family Hotline at 951-732-8511 or go to prayer.lifespringmedia.com. I'll pray for you in my quiet time and we'll share these requests and praises on the show. (music) 
If some of the names you heard me read today give you trouble when you're reading the Bible, may I suggest that you check out my book, Webb's Easy Bible Names Pronunciation Guide, at biblenames.link. That's the website, biblenames.link. It's available in softcover, PDF, and MP3, and you'll find every name in the Bible in the book with every English spelling from every major English translation. Now listen, when you buy the book, you're helping to support this show. And because you're helping, I want to give you a discount since you're part of the LifeSpring family. When you check out, be sure to use discount code PODCAST and you'll get a 25% discount. You only get the discount at BibleNames.link. The soft cover is available on Amazon, but you won't get the discount. If you want the PDF or MP3 version, they're only at BibleNames.link. Thanks to the team, Sister Kirsty, Brother Sean of San Pedro, and Sister Denise for their donations of time and talent. If you're finding value in the LifeSpring Family Audio Bible, please support it at lifespringmedia.com support. And until tomorrow, may God bless you richly. Thank you for inviting me into your day today. My name is Steve Webb. Bye.